What's going on everyone? Welcome to Good Vibe Games. My name is Neil and today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Ticket to Ride Europe published by Days of Wonder. Now for this how to play I will be using the 15th anniversary edition which was provided to me by Asmodee Canada. So let's dive right into it. The 15th Anniversary Ticket to Ride Europe comes with several variants including Classic, Mega Europe, Europe 1912, and Big Cities of Europe. What I'll be showing you in this how to play is the setup and how to play for the Classic game. Just know that the overall gameplay is the same for all variants. All that changes is the setup itself with the variants including different sets of destination tickets that are added into the game along with a few other minor changes, all of which can be found at the back of the rulebook on page 8. To set up for the classic game, go ahead and place the game board in the center of the table. Each player will then receive their set of 45 colored train cars in the style they choose, a matching set of three colored train stations, and the corresponding score marker. Each player then places their scoring marker at the start of the scoring track, which runs along the game board as you can see here. Shuffle the train car cards with this back and deal a starting hand of four cards to each player. Place the remaining deck of train car cards near the board, then place the top five cards from the deck face up in a row. If after placing the top five cards in a row, there are three or more locomotive cards as seen here, all five cards are discarded and five new ones are turned face up to replace them. Place the European Express bonus card face up next to the board. This will be used for scoring the longest train at the end of the game. Take all the destination tickets with the Europe logo and separate the 6 long tickets from the 40 regular tickets. Regardless of which variant you're playing, you can tell the difference between the regular tickets and the long tickets by the color of the numbered box. Shuffle the long tickets and randomly deal one to each player. Put any remaining long tickets back in the box without looking at them as they won't be used for the rest of the game. Now. Shuffle the regular tickets, deal three face down to each player, and place the remainder in a draw pile face down near the game board. It doesn't have to be right away, but before taking their first turn of the game, players must choose which destination tickets they will keep from amongst those that were dealt. Each player must keep a minimum of two tickets, although they can keep more. Cards they choose not to keep are placed back in the game box without anyone seeing them. The tickets that are put away may be either long or regular tickets. And finally, the player who has visited the most European countries in their lifetime begins the game. In Ticket to Ride Europe, you'll be working to claim train routes connecting cities throughout Europe and building train stations in order to fulfill destination tickets that you start with and draw throughout the course of the game. By claiming these routes one at a time between cities and fulfilling your destination tickets, you'll score points. The object of the game is to be the player with the highest number of points at the end of the game. There are a few ways that you can score points to include the following. Claiming a route between two adjacent cities, successfully completing a continuous path of routes between two cities listed on destination tickets you have in hand, completing the longest continuous path of routes to win the European Express bonus card, and keeping train stations in reserve at the end of the game. However, points can also be lost. At the game's end, points are deducted from each player's score for each destination ticket they did not successfully complete by the end of the game. Now let's get into a player's turn. On their turn, a player can perform one and only one of the following four actions, which will be explained in further detail. You can draw train car cards, claim a route, draw destination tickets, or build stations. First though, let's talk about drawing train car cards as that is more or less what you're going to be doing the majority of the time. There are eight different types of regular train car cards. The color of each type of card match the color of various routes that can be found between cities on the main board. The colors are red, blue, orange, purple, white, green, yellow, and black. If a player chooses to draw train car cards, they may draw two cards. Either of these cards can be drawn from the five face-up cards next to the board 
or from the top of the deck. If drawing a face-up card, the player must immediately replace it with a new card taken from the top of the draw pile. If a player selects a locomotive card from the face-up row of cards as their first choice, it is the only card that they may pick this turn. More on locomotives in just a minute. If at any time three of the five face-up cards are locomotives, much like in the setup, all five cards are immediately discarded and five new cards are turned face-up from the draw pile to replace them. There is no limit to the amount of cards you can have in your hand in Ticket to Ride, so feel free to hoard all of those red ones so your opponents can't claim the routes that you want. If and when the draw pile is empty, shuffle the discard pile to form a new draw pile. Just make sure to shuffle them a lot, because as you discard cards to claim roots, you'll be discarding them in sets, and you want to make sure that those sets get separated as much as possible as you shuffle. Now, let's talk about locomotives. Locomotives are multicolored and act as wild cards that can be part of any set of cards when claiming a route or building a station. They are also vital to claiming fairy routes, which we will also talk about shortly. If a face-up locomotive card is picked during a card draw, it must be the only card picked that turn. If a locomotive is turned over as a replacement for the first card you drew, or if a locomotive is available face-up but was not picked as the first card, it cannot be selected as the second card. Basically, if you were drawing from the five face-up cards, you can only ever draw one locomotive. And if you do draw a locomotive, it's the only card you can take. However, if a player is lucky enough to get a locomotive from the top of the deck because they chose to blind draw, it counts as a single card and they may still draw a second card that turn. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about drawing train car cards. The next action you'll likely be taking quite a lot is claiming routes, as doing so is a great source of scoring points throughout the game. A route is a set of continuous colored spaces between two cities, and in some instances, they will be gray spaces. To claim a route, a player must play a set of train car cards equal to the number of spaces in a route which they would like to claim, along with any locomotives they would like to use. The set of cards must all be matching as most routes require a specific color. Gray routes, however, can be claimed using a set of cards of any one color of your choice. For example, it's my turn and I would like to claim the route from Paris to Brussels. I can do this by using either yellow train car cards or red ones. Taking a look at my hand, I don't have any yellow train car cards. I do, however, have one red card and the locomotive that would make up the two spaces needed. When a route is claimed, the player places one of their plastic train cars in each of the spaces of the route. All the cards used to claim the route are then discarded. Then the player immediately records their score by moving their scoring marker the appropriate number of spaces based on the length of the route claimed as shown on the scoring table on the board. On a future turn, I would like to continue what I started and make my way from Berlin to Danzig. The spaces in this case are gray, therefore all I need to do is produce a matching set of four train car cards. As you can see I have five green cards, so I'll use four of those and claim that route the exact same way I claimed the previous one. When all is said and done, a route with four spaces nets me seven points, which I mark on the score track. A player may claim any open route on the board. They are never required to connect to any of their previously played routes. Regardless of how many routes you could claim, on any turn you are only allowed to claim a max of one route, and a route must be claimed in its entirety during a single turn. Now, with regards to routes in general, there are a few things that I ought to mention. First and foremost are double routes. As you can see on the board, some cities are connected by what are called double routes. That is, two tracks of the same length that connect the same cities. Taking a look here, the route from Pamplona to Paris is a double route. It's two routes of the same length that connect the same cities. However, the routes leaving Marseille, despite being two tracks of the same length, do not connect the same cities and are therefore not a double route. In a two to three player game, only one track of the double route joining two cities can be claimed. This makes the game more competitive at lower player counts as there aren't as many routes to be claimed on the board. 
Once a player has claimed one of these, the other track forming the double root is locked and unavailable to the other players. In a 4 and 5 player game, all routes remain open through the entirety of the game so long as no one has claimed them. Next, we have ferries. Ferries are special gray routes linking two cities across water. To claim a ferry, a player must play a locomotive card for each locomotive symbol on the route, and the usual set of cards of the proper color for the remaining spaces of that ferry route. If we look here, the ferry route from Palermo to Smyrna is six spaces long, two of which are required to be locomotive. The remainder of the route needs to be claimed by a set of four train car cards of the same color, just like before. Likewise, if we were to instead go from Palermo to Roma, it would only cost us one locomotive and a set of three train car cards of the same color. Lastly, with regards to routes and claiming them, we have tunnels. Tunnels are another special kind of route that can easily be identified by the special tunnel marks and outlines surrounding each of its spaces. What makes tunnels different than the others in the game is that players never quite know how long a tunnel is going to be. When attempting to claim a tunnel route, a player first lays down the number of cards required by the length of the route. Here, we're going from Madrid to Pamplona using the black tunnel. And to do so, we will use three of our black train car cards. Then, three cards from the top of the train car draw pile are turned face up regardless of the length of the tunnel. For each card revealed whose color matches the color of the cards played to claim the route, the player must play an additional card of the same color from their hand or a locomotive. We actually lucked out here because we didn't draw any black cards. However, had it looked something like this, I would have had to play an additional two train car cards, locomotives, or a combination of the two in order to finish claiming that route. If the player does not have enough additional train car cards of the matching color, or just doesn't wish to play them, they may take all of their cards back in their hand and their turn ends. Just a reminder that locomotives are multicolored wildcards, so any revealed from the top of the draw pile while attempting to go through a tunnel automatically match the color of the train car cards played on the route and force the player to play an additional card. If a player attempts to claim a tunnel route using only locomotives, they will only have to play additional cards, which will also have to be locomotives, if and only if a locomotive shows up amongst the three cards drawn for the tunnel. Next, we'll talk about the third action you can take on your turn, which is drawing destination tickets. On any of their turns, a player can use their action to draw more destination tickets. When doing so, that player draws three cards from the top of the destination ticket deck. If there are not enough tickets left in the draw pile, the player only draws the ones available. Of the three tickets drawn, a player must keep at least one of them, but may choose to keep more if they wish. Any not kept are placed at the bottom of the destination ticket deck. Tickets a player chooses to keep are kept until the end of the game. There is no way to discard destination tickets once a player chooses to keep them. The cities listed on a destination ticket represent travel goals for the player. If by the end of the game, a player has created a continuous path of trains in their color between the two cities named on their ticket they hold, they score the additional points indicated by the point value on the ticket. If they failed to complete it, they deduct the point value on the ticket from their final score. Destination tickets are always kept secret from the other players. After all, you wouldn't really want them knowing where you're going. The last of the actions you can take on your turn is to build a train station. A train station allows its owners to use one and only one of the routes belonging to another player into or out of that city to help them connect the cities on their destination ticket. Stations may be built on any unoccupied city, even if it currently has no claimed routes into it. Two stations may never be built in the same city. Each player may build a maximum of one station per turn, up to a total of three stations throughout the course of the game. To build their first station, a player discards one train car card from their hand and places the station of their color on a city of their choice. To build their second station, a set of two cards of any one color must be used, and for the third station, a set of three cards of one color. As usual, any number of cards can be replaced by locomotives. 
If a player uses the same station to help connect cities on several different tickets, they must use the same route into the city with the station for all of those tickets. The station owner does not need to decide which route they will use until the end of the game. Now, this concept can be a little bit hard to understand, so I've set up a bit of an example here. Currently, I'm trying to go from Danzig to Lisboa in order to complete my long ticket, which will score me 20 points at the end of the game. I've already started the route by going from Danzig to Berlin, Berlin to Essen, Essen to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Brussels, and finally Brussels to Paris. My hope was to go from Paris to Pamplona, as that is the most direct route, but it's already been claimed by another player. I could go from Paris to Marseille, and then from Marseille to either Pamplona or Barcelona, and then still get to Lisboa in some sort of roundabout way. However, that might take longer and use more trains than I'm willing to. So instead, I've decided to build a train station in Paris. Now, I don't need to decide until the end of the game, but what that would essentially let me do is use this player's trains as part of my own route in order to complete my destination ticket. That being said, let's say that later on in the game I need to get, say, from Paris to Zurich. Once again, I've been blocked by another player. At the end of the game, I have to decide what route my station is going to be used for because I can only choose one. I can choose to use that route that goes from Paris to Pamplona or from Paris to Zurich, but I can't use both. Just a note, a player is never required to build any stations. And in fact, for each station a player does not use, four points are added to the score at the end of the game. Speaking of the end of the game, when a player's stock of train cars is reduced to zero, one, or two, each player, including that player, gets one final turn. The game then ends and the players calculate their final score. Players reveal all their destination tickets, and at this point each player chooses the route to use for their built stations. Again, each station allows the player to use only one route belonging to an opponent into that city for the purposes of completing destination tickets. You should designate this by placing your station on top of one of the train cars on the chosen route as a reminder. These routes now behave like they are owned by both the player who owns the route and the player who owns the station. Now that we've claimed routes with our stations, I'll go ahead and show you how to calculate your final score and I'll do so by using the blue player as an example. The blue player already had 52 points from routes claimed throughout the game. Further to that, they were able to complete the route from Lisboa to Danzig, scoring them 20 points for this ticket, and Frankfurt to Smolensk, which scores 13 points. Unfortunately, they were unable to complete the third ticket they picked up throughout the course of the game and are deducted 8 points. Next. They still have two stations left for a total of eight points, and they do in fact have the longest continuous line of trains, earning them the European Express bonus and the additional 10 points that goes along with that. That gives them a final score of 95. Sadly, the red player got a little too ambitious with the number of routes they thought they could complete and lost a fair number of points from that, leaving our blue player as the winner. If two or more players are tied for the most points at the end of the game, then the player who has completed the most destination tickets is declared the winner. If still tied, then the player who has used the least number of stations wins. And in the unlikely event that players are still tied after all of that, then the player who has the European Express bonus card among the tied players is declared the winner. And there you have it. That was how to play Ticket to Ride Europe. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified on any future videos. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Links for everything in the description below. But until next time, thanks for watching and happy gaming.